your longevity lifestyle designer. This is Zach here with Secrets of Longevity.com as well as ZachMartinCover.com. And I recently had a viewer ask what I eat throughout the day on a daily basis. And while that's always changing from season to season, like they mentioned, um, I thought I'd give an example of something else I don't usually show on this channel here. And that's, I'm going to make sort of what I often eat later on in the day, like a big salad. I don't eat a salad every day, but uh, probably like five days out of seven I eat something like this. And as for the rest of my diet, I'm not going to go into detail on all that. I mean, you see the videos I do make on here. I often share most of what I eat, but I just haven't yet to show a salad. And that's really the only other aspect of my diet you haven't seen. I mean, you've seen the green juice. I do that very regularly. I do a smoothie every day. Uh, I also do sometimes, on occasion, the uh, oatmeal, like a raw oat groats, whether it's uh, steel cut oats or just the raw whole oat groats. I sometimes do that soaked in water overnight. Uh, yeah, and there's other variations. Sometimes, once in a while, I'll do like a raw recipe that's a little more complicated, but I never get that fancy, to be honest. Now, there's a lot more preparation in this compared to other recipes that I usually do, except for maybe the ice creams. Um, but I'll get right into this and show you everything that I do. So first off, I'm going to make the dressing. I've got a bowl. I squeeze half a lemon into it. And if there's seeds, I pick the seeds out, but there might not be any in this one. I don't think I might have already picked them out. Anyways, once I've... I always save the peel and I put those in my juice. So I put the lemon peel through, as you saw in the, just the video the other day. Then I add olive oil, and I do about two to three tablespoons. I just sort of do equal portions of whatever juice I get out of that half lemon to the olive oil, so I never measure. And I'm just going to pour a bit in here. Maybe it's four tablespoons. I have no idea, really. It's about half and half in terms of the amount of liquid in there. And then I start adding spices. Uh, I use aged garlic liquid extract sometimes in my salad dressings. I'll use it today. Uh, just like... I'm not even counting, but that's like 20 drops. Uh, and that's because I personally can't uh, handle raw garlic at this point because I really kind of injured myself in the summer when I overdosed on garlic for a long period of time trying to do some sort of cleanse. And uh, it was actually a garlic extract I was taking, but it wasn't aged. It was like a pureed garlic, and it really, I was getting stomach aches after I'd eaten. I thought I was cleansing something, and then someone pointed out to me that I was probably overdoing the garlic, and yeah, I was probably burning the stomach lining a bit, so I'm, I, the aged garlic extract really does not burn, but it has many of the same benefits without the sort of slightly toxic effects that um, raw garlic can have. Then I add some spices. I This is equal parts turmeric, cumin, and coriander, so it's kind of like a uh, an Indian uh, curry spice, but not exactly. There's some other things I'd be missing, but you can find some links below to uh, some a source where you can get these herbs if you don't have a local health food store where you can buy them in bulk. Um, I just combine them equal parts, put it into a shaker, put tons in, maybe like half a teaspoon. I like it strong, so you're really getting the effect of those herbs. Uh, cumin specifically is great for regulating kapha and pitta, if you're familiar with the doshas of Ayurveda. And those are the two, I mean more so kapha and myself, even though I've got a thinner frame, I do have a very kapha body type. And then sometimes I put, which I will right now, put some uh, organic stone ground mustard. That's just more flavor, once again. I'm not sort of like a straight up lemon juice and olive oil kind of person. I like to add all sorts of things to it to make it interesting. You know, you can change the dressing and then you can handle having sort of like the same salad day after day in terms of the ingredients in it. If you keep changing the dressing up, it really makes it appealing. And this is really the key to my salad dressings that I always put on my salads and it really makes the whole salad much more of a meal, much more uh, satisfying I find. And I put one, uh, basically one to two tablespoons of spirulina, so it really depends on how much I feel like that day. I usually just sort of shake it in. This is going to be about one tablespoon. Actually, yeah, that's more like one and a half, I'll say. One and a half tablespoons of spirulina. And again, you can find a link below if you want to get, get a source for that. Then you take the whole thing and stir it up, and the spirulina has an interesting consistency. It really makes the salad dressing very thick. And if you find you've accidentally made the dressing too thick, you can add a little more liquid. I you might not want to add too much more olive oil because it's going to be too, too high fat, maybe. But you can always add water 
or I sometimes add sauerkraut juice, and if I'm actually out of lemons, I'll use sauerkraut juice. I tend to not use vinegar in my salad dressings unless, you know, I just feel like it one day. So as you can see, it's turned into this really dark, sort of thick uh, dressing that'll coat the whole salad. And this is a lot of dressing, so you need to have a really big salad for it to cover everything. So to make the salad, we're going to literally harvest some pea shoots fresh from this tray here. I'm just going to grab a handful at the base and basically cut them out. Let's throw them in the bowl. And I'll do a video in the future on growing sprouts. So if you guys want to get into that, it's very Good thing to just have this growing in your kitchen, both for the benefits of the oxygenation of having plants in your kitchen and get extra oxygen in your household, and then also the fact that you're getting very fresh food, high in nutrient value and electromagnetic potential, and you know, it's kind of fun. Next, I've got a whole bunch of sunflower sprouts that I pre-prepared because you have to pick off all the little shells one by one sometimes. They haven't been pre-picked. I'm putting those on top of the uh, pea shoots. And I've also got uh, lettuce that I've washed and ripped into shreds here. It's just romaine lettuce. So it's lettuce, sprouts, and I mean you can really do any other combination of greens really, but sprouts are the main factor in this. I'm also going to add some salad sprouts, which is, I believe it's salad mix. Uh, it's just mums sprouting seeds that I sprouted in a jar. And you just kind of pull them out and kind of fluff them up. I like these a lot because they hold a lot of the dressing, so they get drenched and just full of the uh, dressing that we make here. By the way, for the dressing, if you want, if you don't like spirulina and you prefer chlorella, you can always use chlorella in the dressing and mix that in, or any other algae. I mean, there's not really that many options in terms of algae, but spirulina or chlorella are two options that I usually use. I use sometimes alternate between them, or I can do a bit of both, like half a tablespoon of each. And here I've already pre-chopped two wild leeks, which are stuck to the counter a bit. They basically look like green onions. Um, I don't know how to identify them personally because I've never found them in the wild, but my friend picked a bunch for me and gave me some, and they taste amazing. So you could, I guess you could look those up online, wild leeks, and find out how to identify them and find them in your area if you have them. And I'm going to throw some sauerkraut on top of all this. This is sauerkraut without salt in it. It has, I think, a pinch of salt, but it's not like your high salt sauerkraut that you get often at in some of these stores. This is just cabbage, bacteria culture, and water. You just like put a big glob on like that. Then of course we have to have the avocado. And I use avocado every day because that would be too much avocado. If you live in a place where avocado actually grows, it might make sense. I'm just kind of, there's a bit of a black part here I'm cutting off. But yeah, I like avocado maybe two or three times a week. And of course the other half. Careful not to stab your hand through the shell or skin of the avocado. I have done that before. <laughs> it wasn't that big of a deal. I don't think there was even any blood. Then of course, last but not least, I'm going to be adding some dulse on top of this. It's my favorite seaweed right now. You can also find a link for it below if you want to grab some yourself. I usually buy it by the pound. And I just shred it up. I prefer the whole dulse, like it looks like. I prefer it over the flakes because the flakes are a little more dried, and this is almost like wet. It's so fresh. It's not wet, it's dry, but it's still malleable. So here's the final step we've got the salad here with the dulse on top and the salad dressing. So, as you can see, I got the dressing on here. I had to do that off camera because it's so thick and couldn't do it with one hand. But, yeah, this is not a beginner's meal or one that you'd want to use to get people to eat raw food because they won't, they'll be disgusted by it because of how black the spirulina is. But, you know, have fun eating it. It tastes amazing, I think. 
For some reason, the spirulina in combination with the lemon juice tastes like cheese. So I never actually liked cheese when I was eating that kind of stuff, but uh, for some reason I like this flavor here. It's good. It's a very messy meal. Be sure to chew your food. And I'll talk to you next time.